Hello everyone and welcome to a really awesome game. Uh, it's from the Bled Super Tournament of 1961 and it's a game from round 6. It's a former world champion Tigran Petrosian uh, versus Ludek Pachman. Uh, he was a German Czechoslovakian grandmaster and this is a, this is a really a beauty. The game comes as a suggestion from a subscriber, uh, Narayanan S. Uh, so thank you for that. I, ha I have not seen this game yet. I, I might have seen it like somewhere, you know, um, uh, while passing by but never... Uh, really studied it and uh, this is such an amazing tournament that uh, I hope we are going to cover it uh, in its entirety at some point uh, but I decided to still show this game uh, just to give you a glimpse of what you can expect in this tournament so like I said uh, Bled Super Tournament of 1961 uh, featured some uh, extraordinary players here uh, we even have a uh, well uh, sorry about that it's a uh, whoa uh, it's not the greatest of photos, but uh, these are all of the participants of the tournament. Uh, if anyone can make out who all of these uh, uh, guys are, uh, definitely share in the comment section. I will pin your comment, but from the uh, some uh, th that can be spotted a little bit easier. Uh, there's Fisher, I think, all the way on the right, and there's Gligorich next to him. There's uh, uh, I, I cannot recognize the two gentlemen. Then there's Tigran, uh, uh, the the fifth from from left. Then we also see Misha. Misha is in the middle, uh, and uh, well, a lot of players here. Keras is there on the right. Uh, uh, I see Geller in the back. Uh, well, okay, you can make out most of them, but if anyone can make up, uh, make out all of them, do share. And also, there's this very nice photo uh, of them sharing a meal, and this is very tricky. Here uh, on the left, uh, okay, I don't know who the first gentleman is. The second one is Paul Karras, and then there's Geller. Uh, 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 two, two, two people after Karras, but there's this gentleman in between that looks like a... Uh, uh, like a fusion of uh, Petrosian and Tal. Uh, so it's if any of you can make out whether that's actually Petrosian or Tal, that, that'd be great. But it, it can be like either of them, uh, but it does seem to be like it's both of them. So that being said, let's check out this very nice game and why uh, it, it was suggested. So uh, Tigran with the white pieces opens with knight to f3. He starts with a reti opening. Uh, we have c5 by black, uh, and uh, this is the so-called invitation to a Sicilian def defense if white wants to maybe transpose with e4 into a Sicilian. Uh, but uh, Tigran goes for g3. He prepares to fianchetto his light square bishop, castle, and so on. So knight to c6, we have bishop to g2, and now g6, preparing to fianchetto the dark square bishop. Uh, we have castles and the bishop to g7. Uh, we have d3, uh, e6 by black, and now uh, e4, grabbing more space in the center. Knight g to e7, black also prepares the castle, and now rook to e1. Uh, we have castles, and now e5. Uh, here, uh, if this was played uh, probably nowadays, c3 would be would be the more common move here. But here we have e5, grabbing more space in the center, and black immediately challenges that. He plays d6, puts pressure on the uh, e5 pawn and white trades. We have captures, captures, and now knight b to d2. So the e4 square has been vacated, and now the knight is coming to e4. So queen back to c7, and the knight now comes to b3. Puts pressure on the c5 pawn, and also as g3 has been played, you are ready to play bishop to f4 to put pressure on the queen. So uh, you want to develop your pieces with tempo. So here, not that. Uh, black goes knight to d4. Black offers a trade of knights, and also now the queen defends the c5 pawn. Uh, so Tigran continues developing with bishop to f4, attacking the queen on c7, and here queen to b6 is played. Here you could you should actually play knight captures on f3, and I thought this was weird. Why not capture the knight and then play e5, just uh, uh, you know move that bishop out of the way? Uh, the, the thing is, after captures and captures and d5, it seems like after bishop to e3 you are losing the c5 pawn, but not uh, because you can't play b6, the rook would be hanging here. But you could decide to give up a pawn, rook b8, and then uh, you know try and try and uh, exploit this. For example, if bishop captures, you're going to play b6 and and then you play bishop to b7, trade off the light square bishop, maybe try and start start an attack. So uh, it, it's a pawn sacrifice, but maybe maybe uh, one that uh, could have been played. But okay, uh, Bachman goes for queen to b6 instead, and now comes knight to e5. And here uh, is the uh, already a very, very interesting moment in the game. Uh, here, uh, although it looks... Um, 
I like it, it doesn't really matter. Bishop captures on e5 is what you want to play. Captures, captures, and f6. Okay, you've played f6, but uh, you push back the, the bishop or you, you force a trade here, then you're going to play e5 and everything is uh, fine for black. And this is probably what Pachman had in mind, but uh, the problem is he captured on b3 first, thinking that, okay, uh, after Tigran captures on b3, I'm only then going to capture on e5. But here uh, is where things start to go wrong for black. Here, uh, Tigran goes knight to c4. And this comes with tempo. The queen is now under attack, so he will not be trading the knight on e5. Uh, and uh, as Bobby Fischer also annotated this game, uh, Fischer says that, that this is a, a very nice tempo move. So here, after knight to c4, queen to b5, and only now do you recapture on b3. So a captures on b3, and now a5 by black. Uh, we have bishop to d6 by Tigran going after the knight here. Also, the knight cannot move as the rook would be under attack. So bishop to f6 defending the knight. And now comes queen to f3 attacking the bishop here. And it seems like it's perfectly fine. I mean, black can defend this. Just king to g7 and everything is fine. And this is in fact uh, what Pachman played. But now uh, there, is a, there is a real problem here. Here, black's position is completely lost. Uh, and even though... Uh, you could go for it right away. We're going to get back to this position after I show you the game. Here, Tigran first played uh, a rook to e4. And rook to e4 is a deadly preparation move. Uh, Fischer also says that now uh, a beautiful finish is in order. Uh, the, the thing is that now the rook controls the entire fourth rank. And this is a very, very important. Uh, here we have rook to d8. As you don't want to rook on f8, you want to... Uh, move the rook so you can start moving the knight. So here, rook to d8 was played, uh, but now uh, the game is actually completely lost. It's a uh, forced checkmate in seven for for Tigran. So feel free to pause the video here and uh, you know win the game in great style while while I give you a couple of seconds. So uh, for those of you who were able to do it, congratulations on finding the second greatest queen sacrifice on f6. Uh, you all know which is the first one. And for those of you who just want to enjoy the show, it's queen captures on f6. This comes with check and the queen sacrifice simply must be accepted. If you move the king, let's say you try king to g8, uh, then just rook to f4 and you are, uh, you are getting destroyed. If rook to f8, then just bishop to e8. And again, there is no defending against mate. So you have to capture the queen, but even if it wasn't checkmate, you just lost a piece. So you, you kind of have to capture the queen. So here, king captures on f6, and now comes bishop to e5 check. This is the uh, the, the beautiful move, uh, as now the king has to come, uh, come down the board. The g7 has been uh, uh, defended by the bishop. So here, king to g5, and now uh, the move that uh, probably got Fischer's attention the most is uh, uh, Tignan's next move. So once again, feel free to pause the video and try to find the quickest way uh, for white to win this. There are many ways, but the quickest one, uh, while I give you a couple of seconds. So uh, for those of you who were able to do it, uh, congratulations. Uh, if you found the first one as well, then double congratulations. Uh, and for those of you who just want to enjoy the show, it's the beautiful bishop to g7. This is the move that seals the deal because now the king is cut off from both f6 and h6 squares. And now there is nothing to be done here. And it was in fact in this position on move 21 that Ludwig Pachmann resigned the game as there is nothing more to be done here. So uh, all of these squares are taken away from the black king, the rook co covers this entire rank. And uh, after that moves like uh, f4, knight e5, uh, h4 are coming and you're just getting checkmated. To give you a very uh, simple example, for example, if e5, you try and open up, let's say the, the light square bishop's diagonal, maybe even try and vacate some squares for, for the king, uh, it doesn't help, just h4. And now uh, if king to f5, then bishop to h3 is checkmate. That's the, that's the good stuff. And of course, if you go king to h5, then you get bishop to f3 check. And after bishop to g4, uh, it doesn't really matter, just bishop captures, and this is again checkmate. But it's very interesting, even before, uh, Tigran captured here, uh, rook to d8 was played, and Tigran then sacrificed the queen with uh, queen to f6. Uh, the position is completely winning even without this uh, rook to e4 move. 
Although uh, it's easy to understand uh, Tigran's uh, approach to this. The, the position is completely winning for white and you don't want to take any chances. Uh, but just to show you uh, the, the, that bishop to e4 is not necessary, you could just capture on f6 right away. And then after king captures, the same idea applies. Bishop to e5, king g5, bishop to g7. Uh, the star move, uh, but now it is a bit different because you don't have the rook cutting off the king from the from the fourth rank. Uh, but still, it doesn't matter. Whatever you play, you're just lost. For example, uh, if f5, you can just play f4 with check, and now you have to still go down the board. King g4, knight to e3, check. King to h5, and now, for example, bishop to f3 will be checkmate. But uh, there's a lot more to consider, so rook to e4 is just a very practical decision by Tigran, uh, as, uh, so he doesn't uh, have to calculate all that much. Uh, so, yeah. Uh, that's uh, that's the game. Hope you guys enjoyed it. And uh, here are the if you if you guys are in interested, as we are going to cover this tournament in its entirety at some point. Uh, these are the final standings of the 1961 Blood Blood Super Tournament. It's not Petrosian who won the tournament, but it was actually the the Pirate of Riga, the the magician, uh, Mikhail Tal, uh, won the tournament one full point ahead of Bobby Fischer. Uh, there you can see 14 and a half to to Fischer 13 and a half. And interestingly. As you can see, uh, Fisher uh, finished the tournament without a loss. Fisher has eight wins, zero losses, and eleven draws. But Misha uh, uh, d defeated more players. He has eleven wins, uh, one loss, and uh, seven draws. But interestingly, the only game uh, Misha lost in this tournament is to Bobby Fisher, uh, which is all, all the more, more impressive that he was able to uh, clinch first place uh, uh, ahead of Bobby, even though even though he lost to him. But definitely a tournament that we are going to cover uh, entirely, so uh, you know, hope, hope you guys will enjoy that as well. Uh, so yeah, uh, that's the game. Hope you guys enjoyed that and a little bit of history behind the tournament uh, the photos, of course. If you guys, uh, you know, can can make out who, who this gentleman is wiping his mouth, then that, that'd be great. Uh, I would like to thank a mystery person, uh, Mark Murray, Darius Bartkowski, uh, Kale Nolson, and uh, David Durbin for a contribution to my channel. Thank you a lot. I really appreciate it. Uh, as usual, you can check two of my previous videos here. Thank you all for watching, and I will see you soon. Continuing the coverage of the Morphe saga, checking up on your wonderful suggestions, and whatever else happens in the chess world. So, thank you all. I will see you soon, and have an excellent rest of your day. And do keep using hashtag suggestions so we can find many, many more games uh, such as this one. Uh, see you soon.